Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at aromatic compounds and electrophilic substitution. By the end of this lesson then we should be able to do the following. We should be able to apply IUPAC rules for aromatic compounds, describe the bonding structure and stability of benzene, and outline the mechanism for electrophilic substitution reactions of benzene which include nitration and Friedel-Crafts acylation. First of all, then, let's have a look at the structure of benzene. It's made up from six carbons and six hydrogens, and these form a cyclo ring, and they are hexagonal in shape. It was first suggested by an individual of Kekule that this structure really was a double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond structure. However, there's several pieces of evidence that suggest that the double bonds are not localized but actually the electrons are what are called delocalized in a ring structure so we now have strong evidence to prove that benzene is actually c6h6 where each carbon carbon bond is the same length and that is approximately or is 140 picometers in length and that there are six pi electrons which are delocalized above and below the plane These delocalized electrons result in stability and stabilizing the benzene ring. We're just going to go and look at three key pieces of evidence that prove that this delocalized electrons is the correct uh, structure for benzene over the Kekule structure where the double bonds are localized between the carbon carbons. So, the first piece of evidence then for the structure of benzene is the bond length. If we were to imagine the bond lengths in the left hand side here, where we've got double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, we'd expect the double bond to be shorter, and we'd expect that to be about 135 picometers, and we'd expect the single bond to be longer at 147 picometers. However, via technology such as X-ray diffraction, the carbon-carbon double bond is actually, oh sorry, the carbon-carbon bond is actually 140 picometers and they all have the same bond length. The reason for this we claim is that between the carbon carbon there is a bond and then the electrons are delocalized above and below this plane within the benzene ring and so we tend to draw benzene as a hexagon with a circle in the middle with the circle representing the high electrons which are above and below the carbon atoms. The next piece of evidence then is from the fact that it doesn't seem to undergo addition reactions. So this is like an alkene that we saw in the AS chemistry. We'd expect to be able to add an electrophile such as bromine and that the bromine water would be decolorized and we would be able to add bromine across this double bond. However, adding bromine to benzene 
there is no decolorization of the bromine, so it does not undergo addition reactions. This gives evidence, again, that our benzene really is six carbon atoms with these delocalized electrons. The final piece of evidence then comes from the enthalpy of hydrogenation. That is the energy change to add hydrogen across the double bond. Here we've got a graphical schematic of what we're trying to say here. And I'll just try and explain it. At the bottom here we have cyclohexane. So that is C6H12. And that is more stable than any of the other products that we are looking at. Then, if we look at the energy to go from cyclohexene, which we have here, we find that the energy to add hydrogen to this molecule is 120 kilojoules per mole. Now, that's the energy to add one hydrogen molecule across the double bond. If we had cyclohexadiene, we'd be right to think that the energy to add two hydrogens across there would be 240 kilojoules per mole. And indeed it is. Now, if cyclohexatriene really was the structure of benzene, we'd be adding three hydrogen molecules. And we would expect the value to add three hydrogens to be three times 120 equal to 360 kilojoules per mole for the hydrogenation to get down to cyclohexane. What is actually found is that the energy to add three hydrogens to benzene is not actually 360 kilojoules but is actually 208 kilojoules per mole is the energy we get out. And what that means is that benzene is more stable than cyclohexatriene by 152 kilojoules per mole. Because that's the difference between 360 and 208. compared to cyclohexatriene. The stability, we say, is due to the delocalization of electrons in the pi system. So these pieces of evidence indicate that our benzene really is, as shown on the right-hand side here, where we've got six carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms. It's a planar molecule with bond angles of 120 degrees because they're all trigonal planar about the carbon atom. And we have three pi electrons above and three pi electrons below the plane of carbon atoms. Before we go and look at the reactions of the benzene molecules. We're going to have a quick look at naming the aromatic compounds.
And there's two ways of naming aromatic compounds. When the benzene is the primary functional group, uh, we name it with the ending benzene. And so in these cases across the top, we have chlorine, nitro, methyl group, and a chloromethyl group. They're the secondary functional groups. And the primary functional group then becomes the C6H5, and that's named benzene. So we have chlorobenzene, nitrobenzene, methylbenzene, and chloromethylbenzene. Now, in other times, if it, when it's not the primary functional group, then we have the suffix phenyl. So in these cases, we actually name the side groups here as the primary functional group, and the phenyl group becomes the prefix to our organic molecule. So here we have an amine, and we have phenylamine. Here we have the alcohol, and we become phenol. Here we have ethanone, so we have the ketones, so we have phenyl ethanone, and finally here we have ethene, and therefore we have phenyl ethene. Finally, to look at in terms of naming aromatic compounds is how we number them. On the left hand side here, we've got two methyl groups coming off different positions of the carbon. Uh, backbone, which is essentially a benzene ring here. So how do we name these? Well, this is benzene. And because we've got two of the same group, which are methyl groups, we have dimethyl benzene. And then we have to deal with the numbering. And in this case, we start at one of the methyl groups and we simply number around to the lowest number. So we have one, three, dimethyl benzene. Over on this right hand example, well here we've got a phenyl amine group. So we're going to name this as a phenyl amine. And the fact that it's a phenyl amine also denotes that this must be position number one. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, my numbers have disappeared there. One, two. So we now have two, four, six, tri, chloro, phenyl amine. And here, because it's a phenyl amine, it's the amine group here, which is fixing our position number one. Benzene and its phenyl associates um, undergo electrophilic substitutions rather than electrophilic additions. The electrophilic substitution then requires a strong electrophile and our electrophiles are going to have a full positive charge. We're going to first of all look at the nitration reaction which requires the formation of the electrophile NO. 2 plus, which is called the nitronium ion. Now, we'll first of all look at how we form the nitronium ion. This is a reaction between concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. And this is done at a low temperature. It's all done in the same pot at less than 55 degrees Celsius and because sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than the nitric acid it donates a proton to the nitric acid and we end up with H2NO3 plus and HSO4 minus and in a following step the nitric or the product from the nitric acid here forms H 
to NO3 plus, and that breaks down to the nitronium ion and water. Once this nitronium ion is made, the nitronium ion then reacts with the benzene. And in an electrophilic reaction, we have electrons going towards the electrophile. That's a positive charge. So these come from the delocalized electrons, which we describe by drawing from the circle toward the positive nitrogen going through the carbon atom. What this results in is a NO2 group attached to the benzene ring. And our benzene ring now has a positive charge on it. In terms of the AQA exam, make sure that this ring doesn't go past the carbons 2 and 6. Examiners are looking for it to stop before you get to the carbon 2 and 6 to show the breaking in the bonds. Now then, due to the stability here of the benzene ring, there's two options. It could form uh, a diene, but in fact, because the benzene is more stable than the diene, as we saw before, the hydrogen atom actually donates back into the ring. And the product ends up being the nitro-substituted benzene ring. And we have the hydrogen ion remaining. This hydrogen ion can then re-react with the HSO4- minus that we made earlier. So our HSO4- minus from the formation of the nitrogen ion, nitronium ion sorry, plus the H+, plus, reforms the H2SO4. And so the H2SO4 in this reaction is acting as a catalyst. The only final thing to note is this nitro compound that we formed at the end can further react and be reduced to form a phenylamine, which is not part of the mechanism that you need to know, but it can be reduced to the phenylamine using tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid with reflux and sodium hydroxide. And that's in the amines video earlier on. We do need to know that synthesis, but we don't need to know the mechanism. Importantly here, our product is the nitro benzene and as well this is a mono substituted benzene but it's possible to get multi substitutions um, via further additions. The final reaction then that uh, we're going to look at here again is the electrophilic substitution it's also called the Friedel Crafts acylation. And what we're going to add here is the acyl group C double bond O R to the benzene ring. This is going to require again a strong electrophile. And this electrophile this time is going to be a carbocation, which is on the acyl group. So we have a positive charge on the acyl group. First up, then we're going to look at the, how we form this carbocation. And this is formed from an acyl chloride and a halogen carrier, which we call AL, well, which is AlCl3. And it's called a halogen carrier because it's going to accept this lone pair of electrons which are going to be generated from the chlorine and the halogen carrier AlCl3 has got an empty orbital 
and therefore is able to accept that lone pair of electrons. The product then from this reaction is AlCl4 minus and importantly the acyl carbocation. So here we are able to now look at the mechanism. Again, as we saw before, the electrophilic substitution starts from the pi electrons on the ring of the benzene, goes through the carbon and attacks the carbon that is positively charged. This gives us a positively charged intermediate with the acyl group attached. Once again, there are now two options, the hydrogen could, um, or the benzene could accept a negatively charged species, but instead the hydrogen ion, or the hydrogen, donates its electrons back into the ring here. We form H plus as a product, and we have the acyl group attached to the benzene ring. Sometimes you may see the AlCl4 minus indicating the attachment or the, the, the removal of that hydrogen around the benzene ring. But importantly now at the end, the AlCl4 minus that we had in the first instance will react with the proton that's been removed from the benzene ring, regenerating AlCl3 and hydrochloric acid with the AlCl3 being regenerated and therefore acting as a catalyst. So this reaction is done with the acyl chloride, AlCl3 catalyst, and is generally done under reflux conditions. So that brings us to the end of the electrophilic substitutions and the reactions of benzene. So you should now be able to apply IUPAC rules for aromatic compounds, describe the bonding structure and stability of benzene, and outline the mechanism for electrophilic substitution reactions of benzene. Please do subscribe to the channel, and there's also links to other videos within the A-level AQA chemistry video syllabus. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.